Do you think Astra will continue to manufacture vaccines? Yes. Yeah. So there was a decision to, you know, do we, you know, we've helped serve the world mm -hmm. on this one. Then, then the question is, you know, well, do we continue after after this? Yeah. And a lot of debate and discussion. And the CEO decided, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And we've created uh, the therapy area. So there is a vaccines and immune therapies uh, division mm -hmm. headed up uh, at the senior executive table. So, mm -hmm. yes, we're in it for the, the long term now. Yeah, that's nice. Hi, and welcome to Rayless Play. AstraZeneca is showing fantastic, res fantastic results right now and seems to be going straight against the coming recession. A very important part of the company's operation is in Sweden and Södertälje, south of Stockholm. Today you will meet Jim Fox, who is the manager of the giant plant in Södertälje and the second highest manager of the business in Sweden. How important is Sweden to AstraZeneca? That's one of several questions I'm about to ask him. So, uh, Good morning and nice to meet you, Jim, and welcome to Trailers Play. Good morning, Jesper, and delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, there was a lot of snow outside this uh, this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little more than the UK at the moment. Yeah, but you live nearby, so you you walked. You didn't have to take the car or the bus no. or so. No, the, the the Swedes tell me that it's not about the weather; it's about what you wear. So yeah. I've got my <laughs> <laughs> snow gear on today. <laughs> You're adapting to the Swedish mindset. Trying. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you are vice president, as I said, for Sweden operations and have head of the site in Södertälje. Uh, tell us about your job. So it's uh, you're right; it's quite a big job. Mm -hmm. um, we have about six factories uh, in Södertälje, and we have about five thousand people. So we uh, we have a big um, job to do for AstraZeneca globally. Mm -hmm. We do all of the new product introduction in Södertälje, pretty much. Yeah, and we supply to over a hundred countries. 100 countries that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot yeah quite a responsibility yeah you have worked in life science i think for over 20 years yeah. uh, tell me about your background so it's an interesting one um so i worked for a competitor company dare i say it for 23 years mm. and uh, i didn't really intend to leave the company until i pick up picked up the phone one day and uh, it was astrazeneca and i got more and more interested in it yeah um I can talk about some of that history. But uh, yeah, I, I started off in R&D, research and development. Mm. Uh, and I was sort of discovering molecules to start with. Then I moved into development, which turns molecules into products mm. and supplies the clinic for patients. And then I've, I, I I got into more into operations where we actually commercially manufacture this stuff. Mm. Um, and I've been privileged to have lived and worked in Singapore and the Asia-Pacific region. And uh, I lived and worked in Japan as well, which was fascinating. Oh, you're a globetrotter. <laughs> a, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But if we talk to AstraZeneca in general, it seems to defy the recession right now. And you're doing fantastic results. Why do you think that is? So there's a very good um, vision for the company. And uh, basically all the employees pretty much know what the vision is. And they break it into sort of five-year pieces. So we had a, a vision for 2025. And we're really on track for that. Uh, and literally with the senior executive team, uh, we just launched our 2030 bold ambition. Mm. Um, and it becomes a momentum. You know, the company returned to growth in quarter four 2017. And uh, it's just been a success after success. Mm. So some some really good in-house R&D. And we've also sort of inorganically grown the company through smart acquisitions as well. So we had a vision. We're executing really well against it. Mm. And uh, the results, you know, you have to have a little bit of luck along the way as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, there's momentum now. Yeah. But it can be a problem sometimes. You have a vision and then you have to to uh, implement it. Yeah. What, what I would say is it's a very resilient company. Yeah. So you, you remember through the pandemic, yeah. um, they, they were tough times. Um, but, you know, we, we relied a lot on our employees um, to go the extra mile, uh, which they did. Mm -hmm. And it had a strangely a, a unifying effect. Mm. You know, when, when there's a common enemy, if you like, called COVID, yeah. it brings everybody together with a, you know, a, a real single purpose, mm. um, which, which I think ha has helped. Mm. And that was, of course, hectic times for AstraZeneca as well with the vaccines and so on. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah. But, but great to be part of. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't think of anything else that's, 
going to really affect the world as much as that. And, uh, you know, we had a really important part to play in that. Mm. Yeah, that was my next question, actually. Do you th- <laughs> do you, did you feel that Astra played an important part? If you take a look where COVID is now, you could actually die from COVID <laughs> uh, in the beginning. You, you still can, of course, but but uh, chances are on uh, on that uh, high, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, thanks to the vaccines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we did play an incredibly important Important part, mm-hmm. and um, the really nice thing about AstraZeneca is we we not only supplied uh, to people that were prepared to pay the you know the um, pay for the medicine, but we mm-hmm. also provided a lot for low middle income countries as mm-hmm. well. Um, so I think uh, I need to check carefully, but I think we supplied more doses of vaccine <clears throat> around the world than anybody else. Yeah, and we did it not for profit as well. I don't know whether you realize. Yeah, yeah, and. You got a lot of criticism as well <laughs> during the during the ride. Uh, if you take a look in the uh, in the mirror now and, and see, uh, and you think of all that, do you think you were treated unfair? Ah, uh, well, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, you have to take on the chin, mm. as, as a British saying. Um, you take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. Um, you know the the da- the date the data. Um, Actually, was pretty positive for AstraZeneca. So if you looked hard at the data, yeah, um, we did really well. Mm. Um, but you know, it, it was you're in the media spotlight. Um, everything is being critiqued, and yeah, yeah maybe some yeah. of it was a bit unfair. And it was kind of chaos <coughs> for a year. Uh, we didn't know anything about this virus, and we really wanted vaccines fast. And then, well, and, it was, uh, it was yeah. panic. Yeah, people were worried. Yeah, people were dying. Yeah. And they did, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, uh, I think that was a uh, part of history that we will never forget. No, no, it's in this generation for sure. Yeah. Jim, uh, Astra is a global company. Uh, how important is Södertälje and Sweden for Astra globally? Do you think? Extremely. Mm. Um, so it's responsible for up in excess of forty percent of the company supplied revenue. Um, worldwide. Mm. So if you look at the total revenue for AstraZeneca, 40% of that is supplied from Ciditalia. Oh, that's so a lot. <laughs> pretty big. Yeah. And if you convert that to, so, so not just on a company level, but on a national level as well, um, it's responsible for uh, over 100 billion sec uh, of Swedish exports, mm. which is 6.3% of Sweden's uh, export value. Yeah. So, you know, if we if we miss a heartbeat in Sicilia, we we have interest from our, our company at a senior level, but <laughs> yeah. also from uh, from the nation as well here. Yeah. At your new factory in Jatuna outside Södertälje, you, you produce biological drugs. I think that's the correct uh, name for it. Uh, this is very hot right now in in life science. Uh, are you pleased with this investment? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's 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 definitely the way. Um, you know, medicine is going in, in the future. Mm. And it's nice to have something that's at the cutting edge mm. of, of technology. And it balances really nicely the rest of the, what we call small molecule work that we do in uh, Yartun and Snackbeacon as well. Mm. It's, a, it's a real morale boost for, for the company and for Sweden itself, mm. I think. As I said, it's pretty hot right now, but what is biological drugs? <laughs> so it's- uh, In simple terms. <laughs> in simple terms, yeah. it uses your- your biology to give the therapeutic effect. Whereas small molecule is is more of a sort of a chemistry effect. Mm. Um, Biologics is just a different mechanism of action within your body. So do, do you want to produce more drugs, uh, more biological drugs uh, in the near future? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, absolutely. And we're set up nicely to do so. Mm. Uh, the company has recognized that we want to be back into vaccines and immune therapies. Mm. And this is one of the, you know, a, a very small number of biologics drug product facilities uh, globally for AstraZeneca. So anything that's new that comes through the pipeline is likely to be finished off in this plant. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's an extra important plant <laughs> for AstraZeneca. Don't mess up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't mess up. That's good. <laughs> I think around 10 years ago, Jim, AstraZeneca decided to close down the research uh, unit in Södertälje. It shifted to manufacturing with the results of more jobs coming in, I think. But AstraZeneca still has research in Sweden, in Gothenburg. Uh, how important is the research uh, department in, in Gothenburg? Uh, again, very, very important. Yeah. Um, I mean, the idea was to consolidate R&D in, in one location, mm. and we chose Gothenburg. Mm. Um, and Gothenburg is only one of three um, global centers. So we have Gothenburg, we have Cambridge in the UK, and Gaithersburg in the US. And they do all of our R&D. And the really good thing about Gothenburg is <clears throat> they are researching into all the therapy areas that we do for AstraZeneca. So extremely important. In Södertälje, there is also Scania. And, and um, Sto- in Stockholm, there is uh, KTH, the university. Uh, do you collaborate with each other? And if so, in what way? Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so Scania is literally on our doorstep. Yeah. Uh, and now so is KTH. We have this Södertälje Science Park that was created a few years ago, which is a collaboration between AZ Scania and KTH mm-hmm. University. Um, <clears throat> really focusing on you know, production technologies, production planning, um, sustainable manufacturing. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're pretty close. Mm. So you learn from each other and you uh, share your learning as well? We absolutely do. And, and it, it, there's more similarities in making trucks yeah. and making pills than <laughs> yeah. you would think. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, you know, Scania were the early pioneers of you know, the lean production system that, that a lot of companies learned from Toyota. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it kind of doesn't matter whether you're efficiently producing parts of trucks mm-hmm. or whether you're efficiently producing tablets. Mm-hmm. The, the the systems and the um, the methodology are very similar. Okay. And what makes it nice is we're, we're, we're not competitors, no. so we can share all of these things and, mm. and play nicely together. Yeah. I think it's nice if you, when you learn from each other. Definitely. Yeah. And we, and we don't profess to be the best at everything. Well, we're pretty good at science. Yeah. But, you know, Scania have a, a brilliant track record in production. Mm. Do you think Astra will continue to manufacture vaccines? Yes. Yeah. So there was a decision to, you know, do we, you know, we've helped serve the world mm-hmm. on this one. Then then the question is, you know, well, do we continue after, after this? Yeah. And a lot of debate and discussion. And the CEO decided, yes, we are. Mm-hmm. And we've created uh, the therapy area. So there is a vaccines and immune therapies uh, division mm-hmm. headed up uh, at the senior executive table. So, mm-hmm. yes, we're in it for the, the long term now. Yeah, that's nice. Railus uh, is a technician consulting company. Yeah. And we're in the middle of the transition uh, right now uh, with the yeah, green energy and, and so on. What's your advice to us? Do you have any advice for us? We're also on a mission and we're also helping the society, if you, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I mean, we've just had COP27. Mm. Um, I'm not sure whether it's still ongoing, but mm. uh, certainly in the last couple of weeks. So, you know, climate change is a massive thing globally. So it's a huge focus. Um, I'm really pleased that um, AstraZeneca are at the forefront in life sciences, mm. arguably cross-sector as well. Um, so... I think from your perspective, anything you can do to to get involved with those companies that have the ability to change carbon footprint Mm. on an entire supply chain, you you should be very interested Um, because the, you know, the technology is changing all the time. And, you know, you just see with current inflation, of course, energy pricing going through the roof. So that, that in itself gives an opportunity for some of those technologies that perhaps weren't so competitive in terms of pricing before. Mm. So it opens up, I think, a whole green world of different types of technology Mm. rather than just straight renewable from wind, um, certainly not fossil fuels, um, but it brings in geothermal or solar panels these days where, you know, in the past, the return on investment on solar panels wasn't so good. But with the energy pricing being so high, it suddenly comes back into play, for example. Mm. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> no problem. But uh, last question, Jim. Uh, how do you see AstraZeneca's operation in Sweden in 10 years? Well, <clears throat> we're going through a you know a visionary place at the moment. So we're trying to set ambition for the next 10 years. So as I said, AstraZeneca have said, set out their bold ambition 2030. Mm. So my job with my team and um, 
the sort of Telia staff is to basically say, you know, how do we set ourselves up for success in the future? Mm. So you touched on it a little bit. The products are changing. They're becoming a little bit more niche um, and they're being more targeted to, to at a patient level. Mm. So we will probably go from, you know, large factories where you produce lots and lots of tablets to slightly smaller, but with higher tech. Okay. Mm. So we're in the process at the moment of uh, of investing in technology in Sudatelia. Mm. Um, so we have some some stuff coming in early next year that will start to set the tone for the next 10 years. Yeah. So instead of having huge factories with um, long production runs, it'll be smaller but more process intensive. Mm. Um, and we will need to be at the very front end of technology to be able to do that. Mm. So it's very important that Sweden shows its ability to, to be in the forefront in Absolutely. this transformation in the life science uh, area. Definitely. And, yeah. I, and I'm really impressed with, this, the, with, with the innovation I've seen in Sweden. Mm. Um, you know, it's not something necessarily uh, if you're outside of Sweden, you, you associate Sweden with, but I don't know why. No. Um, but since being here, it's, it's incredibly innovative, mm. creative and so on. So I think we've got a, if we've got the raw ingredients, which is really good people, we have good funding mechanisms within the company. It's an important site. We've just got to make sure that we're placing our bets on the right things. Yeah. And that's your job to lead that. <laughs> no pressure, right? Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> it was so nice meeting you, Jim. Likewise. And thank you for coming to Rayless Play. Yes, uh, Jim Fox, uh, the manager of the giant plant in Södertälje and the second highest manager of the business uh, in Sweden for the life science company AstraZeneca. Thank you for watching Rayless Play and hope to see you soon again. Bye.